live from the slurpy capital of the world, it's After Dark! Tonight's special guest, Big Daddy Taz. We shine our spotlight on the gentle bear man of emo, Michael Scheibler. And we give five minutes of fame to stand-up comedian Kevin Doby. So without further ado, let's introduce your host, Nelson Mayer and Clayton T. Stewart. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. I can't believe people showed up. Look, they're people and they're here. And they're not social distancing at all. Look at you guys. I think we're going to be responsible for the next spike in Winnipeg. I think this is it's our fault. Oh, but it's been so long. It's been uh, four months. Four months. Four months since we last performed. Yeah. And. Uh, Wow. I don't know what we're going to talk about. Like, nothing has happened in the last four months. <laughs> nothing interesting has happened at all, except for maybe that virus that was threatening to wipe out humanity. There was that. There was that, yeah, or it absolutely. it was just a minor cold, depending who you talk to, right? Depending. We have murder hornets. We murder have hornets, aliens, yeah. aliens, riots, protests. And, of course, Kanye West is running for president. That's incredible, Woo! yes. Yeezy. He has succeeded in doing the one thing that nobody else could do. He's made Americans look at the president they have now and say, well, it could be worse. <laughs> I think it's great. I would love to see Kanye as president. Can you imagine that? We get another Kardashian reality show, Kanye West Wing. That would be great. <laughs> we live in a world where you could see the first lady's porno. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Can you imagine? That is crazy to me. I, you know, when I was growing up, Barbara Bush was first lady. I can't yep. imagine Barbara Bush porno, <laughs> which is crazy because she had the perfect name for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping he gets elected. I can't wait to see Kanye West at a G8 summit meeting interrupting Trudeau saying, I'm going to let you finish, but France has had the best environmental record of all time. I'd vote for him. That's all I'm saying. I'm just, like, thrilled to be in front of an audience again, but I, it's been four months since I've had to be funny. Like, it's, I'm not used to being funny. No, I'm not used to you being funny either. <laughs> How has COVID affected your home life? Well, oh, COVID is fantastic for me. I've been loving being quarantined. How have you guys been enjoying quarantine? Is that treating you okay? Yeah. How many relationships survived quarantine? I was wondering if this is a, a singles night group and you guys are all here because your relationships all went to shit. That's why you're here now, right? I was hoping. You know what? Would, I mean, a lot of people I know, they didn't make it through COVID with their relationship intact. But you know what's worse than that, I think, realizing that you hate your partner, is being stuck in quarantine with a partner who absolutely loves being stuck in quarantine with you. Absolutely. Get, this is so fantastic. This is my relationship. I I'm, I'm swear this is true. Oh, it's so fantastic being having to spend so much time together. We can talk about so much stuff. It's fantastic. And I'm like pretending to have COVID just so she'll f***ing leave me alone. <laughs> just every now and then. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to come for a walk with me and my parents? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be ready in a second, yeah. I'm going to the basement for a f***ing month. That's what I'm doing <laughs> for COVID. You know what's interesting to me? You guys know when you're driving, you see those signs, right? The sign that the arrow, you guys all know what those are when you're driving. You see a sign with an arrow. What does that mean, you guys? You know what that means? It does not mean COVID. Who said that? <laughs> Take that one person's way, license. Right. Yeah. Somebody said it means one way. Everybody yeah. knows that, right? Except for the dumbass that said COVID. <laughs> so if everybody knows what that is, how come when we take that sign and put it on the floor of the grocery store, nobody knows what the hell it is anymore? <laughs> I have hated shopping, but it's weird because I'm a total hypocrite like everybody else, I think. Because I walk in the store and I'm trying to follow the lines and anybody that walks past me the wrong way, I judge the shit out of them. Like, you can't see the line, what the hell's the matter with you? Look at that arrow, where's it going? And then when I turn down the aisle where I need something, and the arrow's the wrong way, so, well, ah, shit, nobody's here. <laughs> so I'm a hypocrite as bad as everybody. How has COVID been treating you, Clayton? Oh, uh, let's just say Mary is very excited that I'm out of the house finally. <laughs> um, I uh, got in a very deep existential argument with my cat the other day. Um, 
And, you know, cats are usually very laid back, very, you know, they don't give a shit, you know. Uh, my cat gave a shit. My cat was like, I've had enough. I want you out of the house. Please go. And uh, I got to <laughs> I gotta explain to people that I'm not a cutter. If you see, like, scars on my arms, I wasn't, like, emotionally traumatized. I don't cut to feel things. I have two little bastards at home that think playtime is a fight to the death. So that's... So I finally left them alone, and Mary's just ecstatic because I don't know if, if you can tell, but having a uh, comedian as a boyfriend is interesting when you're quarantined <laughs> in tiny, you know, tight. I have the exact same situation. I have four bastards, but mine are my children. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've, I've had to homeschool. I didn't, I didn't sign up for homeschool in the beginning because I knew damn well I'm not a goddamn teacher. I don't want to deal with shitty kids, and mine are the shittiest kids of all. <laughs> so why would I want to teach them? And I tried. I gave it my best shot. You know, I did all the crap. They sent me all these apps and links for shit that I have to teach them and work. I don't, I don't even know how to turn the computer on. I'm trying to teach my kids how to do things. Finally, I just gave up. I said, you know what? Your video games have reading in them. We're going to count that as reading. Go ahead. Play all fucking games. <laughs> That was the extent of my homeschooling my kids. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I'm only in charge of cats because, I mean, I and I can barely take care of those. Like, I, there are days that I forget that I have cats because they're just, you know, off doing their own thing. Also, you're not allowed within 50 yards of a school. That too, yeah. <laughs> Problem. They leave me little presents. They, they let me know that they're annoyed that I'm not there, you know, tending to their every beck and call. Oh yeah, they, when I come home, they greet me by coming up to me and bleh, right on my, <laughs> right at my feet. So I've been cleaning that up for a while and then it got even worse because my, uh, my bigger cat, Pixel, the, the asshole, uh, <laughs> Pixel would come up to me and I guess I was used to her throwing up at my feet, which never get used to that, by the way. Uh, my cat would come up and her whole body started to shake and she pooped. She angry pooped right in front of me. And I was like, that's kind of impressive. Like, I'm not sure if I should start up the world's shittiest cat circus or not, you know, pun intended. So we have a great show for you guys tonight. We uh, have Big Daddy Taz as our special guest. Yes. We are shining our community spotlight on the gentle bear man of emo, Michael Scheibler. And we are giving five minutes of fame to stand-up comedian Kevin Doby. You guys are in for a treat. Thank you, guys, and we will continue on with more After Dark. All right, all right. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have our five minutes of fame segment. Uh, this segment, we're going to uh, feature uh, aspiring comedians, performers, basically anyone who will come on our show at this point. <laughs> so, like, a few people. Uh, <laughs> but our first five minutes of fame is a, a stand-up comedian. He's performed all across Canada. Uh, he's been on Spike TV, I believe. And uh, he's here for you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, please warm welcome for Kevin Doby. sex too. <laughs> is, that, is that PG-13 enough? Sure. All right. All right. You guys excited to be out? <laughs> I dig your whole style, man. I dig everything. Stand up. Stand up. Let's get a turn for everybody. Look at this shit. Yeah. Right. I, I just came out in the same shit that I go to my office in. Yeah, that's right. I wear this to work. I work in an office. I wear a Hawaiian shirt three times a week. Someone was like, you know what's cool? I'm like, what's that? They're like, Cuban guy shirts. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. 
but I'm taking it as a personal offense. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys a story about the very first time I met my birth father. That's right, it's really touching, so this is a true story. <laughs> and it hurts Clayton because, yeah, you know, he never met his dad either. <laughs> but it, it's kind of funny because I had two. So, uh, fuck you. <laughs> my PG-13 sets later, right? We'll just cut it. We're bleep good. it. We're we'll good. bleep it. So I, I'm, I'm, at a, I'm at a stand-up comedy show, and I'm about to go up. Like, I was basically just imagine I'm on the stairs, and up walks this little short dude. He was like five foot seven. I know, look at me. Five foot seven. Blonde hair, blue eyes, full Canadian tuxedo. <laughs> That's right. Some of you are like, what's that? I'm gonna paint a picture for you, ma'am. Jean jacket, jean shirt, jeans. <laughs> Proud moment for my genetics. <laughs> Made me understand every single style choice I've made in my whole life. Could I wear jeans with this? Yep. But no, I was raised by people who didn't believe in Canadian tuxedos. Can you believe it? Just picture me at Tim Hortons in that Canadian tuxedo glory, drinking a double-double. I could have been that guy, but I'm not. So he says to me, I'm your dad. And I actually said back, go away, I'll talk to you later. Cause like I was really new and I had to like remember stuff and I wasn't ready for that kind of deep conversation. Like, hey, I knocked your mom up 27 years ago. <laughs> Awkward, I didn't even invite you here, but whatever, let's go. <laughs> so at the end of the show, he starts talking to me. He goes, hey, I'm gonna take you and your friends out. And I'm like, okay. He's like, your birthday was pretty recently, right? I'm like, you should know this, <laughs> dick. So he takes us out to Papa George's, which, let's be honest, that place was awesome, you know. Yeah. You know, right? Woo! Stylish knows, he knows. Yeah. Sure. He didn't name me Sue, but they named me Christopher. Ugh. <laughs> I know, right? It's bullshit. No one wants to sleep with a Christopher. <laughs> Not even, well, no. <laughs> now, now there's like a debate going on between the ladies where she's like, no comment, and you're like, I'd never bang a Christopher. She banged a Christopher. <laughs> She banged him hard. He sold me drugs. He did? His kid? The kid sold you drugs. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, technically marijuana is not a drug. I have to agree with her. You know what it is? Coffee. When I, like, when I had to quit coffee, it was terrible. Like third day and I was like, I'll suck a dick for an espresso. <laughs> Gonna be rough. Our next segment was going to be a bit where we made fun of the movie The Notebook. Yes. We were going to film a segment uh, where Clayton was going to play the role of Allie from The Notebook. Yep. We will save that for next week. You guys missed that. But uh, I come up with something that Clayton doesn't know about. This is a thing that I'm springing on him. Clayton, would you consider you're an adventurous kind of sort? I, I sure. And I, you strike me as the type of guy that likes food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't imagine there's much food that you would turn down. Am I correct in this assumption? That's true. That's very true, yes. I don't know why something tells me that. So here is a thing that I brought tonight. Okay. I thought I would bring this, and who would like to see Clayton eat a zebra tarantula? A friend of mine... A friend of mine brought this back for me from the United States, pre-COVID, so we're okay. Yeah. You know? Uh, they're, yeah, they're that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> but this came pre-COVID, so we're okay. Okay. Uh, and also, I checked for you. It says, best before date, December 25th, 2020, so it's still good. It's still oh, a it's good still fresh. tarantula. Okay. <laughs> good. That it, was the other thing that was worrying me on it, my mind. It, it was... does say, warning, some people may be irritated by the tiny hairs covering the tarantula's body. <laughs> You okay with the hairs, Clayton? You've eaten at Salisbury House. You're fine. <laughs> There's no way it's an issue. So what do you think? Do you want to give it a shot? I, yeah. I, I have no pressure. You don't have to. Why? Well, you... Oh, Lord. Oh, 
Okay, let, let's see it first. Let's see before I... Oh, you want to look at it. See, it's uh, okay. It's fine. Clay. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a tiny tarantula. <laughs> it's been boiled. That's like a snack-sized tarantula. It's boiled and dehydrated, not fried, so it's healthy. And it has a light Whew. dusting of salt. I was, I was going to turn it down if it was deep fried. I was going to say, I can't. I'm watching, watching my figure. figure. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we're looking at. I want to see what it looks like. Can we? Oh, shit. All right. It's not coming out in one piece. That's fine. No, it's... It's coming out in little legs. Oh, oh good. Oh, there's all kinds oh, of legs and lovely. body pieces, and this must be a head here. <laughs> I haven't decided yet, Chris. Why don't you start with a leg? Is anyone leg. else like highly, highly uh, uh, hate spiders? I, I can't even think of the word. That's the phobic, arachnophobic. Thank you. My mind just went. Nyeh! Oh, God. You're going to go for that whole piece or half? It's like a chocolate clay. Tastes like dry spider. Yeah. <laughs> Tastes like a lot of dust. <laughs> I'm trying not to cry right now. <laughs> How are the hairs? I really, oh, so bad. Are you gonna? Are you gonna join oh, me? Oh shit! In this? Are you? <laughs> I have to do it now too. I didn't. Well, I'm just, well, you're eyeing you. the other half, so I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh shit! Oh, All right, you said earlier about your cat throwing up in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just don't angry poop on the stage after that. That's all I ask. There's some legs left if you want. Oh shit, I'm supposed to say it. There's nothing good I can say right now. Right? <laughs> it's terrible. It tastes like something that you would have cooked for me when we lived together. Yeah, that's true. I'm not a good cook. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Cheers. You know, I knew the second he said, I have a surprise for one of the segments. In your there heart, you hoped it was cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's switch from uh, tarantulas to bears now. Stop yeah, I'll this. go queue up that okay. and you can do the, uh, the intro thingy. So we discovered uh, this uh, gentleman who lives in Emo, Ontario. His name is Michael Schiebler. Clay, is that correct? Scheibler. Scheibler, Michael Scheibler, uh, who runs a bear sanctuary out there. And he's been doing this for a number of years. We did a fundraiser for him not too long ago. Uh, decided we would go out there because you can actually interact with bears. And uh, this is what we did. Clayton said we're going to Emo, Ontario, which I assumed was the home of the most depressed bears in all of the land. <laughs> Uh, and we spent some time with the bear man. We, uh, as Bill mentioned, this is a new thing for us. We've never done a talk show. We've never recorded anything. And we learned while we were visiting the bear man that Clayton and I are f***ing terrible at interviewing people. <laughs> Just announced that before Big Daddy Taz comes up. We're going to try to do better, buddy. We didn't film a lot of great stuff, so we cut together. Most of it is just us traveling out there and me being a dick to Clayton, which is what I do. Well, and here's the other thing. There were bears. <laughs> like, we weren't, we weren't like, oh, let's get this shot. We were like... <laughs> bear and he was so calm about it he would just walk up and be like hey how's it going like they were dogs like hey how's it going and then as we're like coming back inside you'll see the like feeding area and that he uh, goes by the way that uh, cub that was out there that was like one years old we're like uh-huh he's like oh yeah that that could have shredded you alive it has like five inch claws i'm like oh okay <laughs> I wanted to see Clayton fight a bear. I wanted to see like Leonardo DiCaprio in that movie, Clayton on his ground just getting pummeled.
I was trying to make it happen. Would have been great footage. <laughs> I was just thinking like all the good, look at that. Good footage I could get if you weren't in the camera <laughs> lens, you know? <laughs> but I didn't have to see that face. Yeah. Nah, I was just thinking, though, when's the last time we road tripped together, man? Holy crap, yeah. It's oh, been geez, a while. It's been, when's yeah, it's been when's a the last time we road tripped when you were driving? <laughs> Has that ever happened? I don't think Never. so. Never. Mostly because I don't let you drive. Is this a road or are we in a farmer's field right now? I'm legit like, did we do something wrong? Remember the time you hit a dead deer? <laughs> never, never gonna let me live that down. Either. You hit a dead deer? <laughs> How can I let you live that down? It came out of nowhere. Yeah. So the map we were given says, you have arrived. Mm -hmm. And this is clearly not our destination. <laughs> Unless our destination was the seventh circle of hell. <laughs> Look, now that we got somebody else driving, we're not in the middle of a farmer's field. <laughs> now that we took the cars away from you, right? Look at that, there's a road there. This gentleman driving for us has a road. What did you have? Dirt. Did you rub that bacon grease on yourself like I told you? Yeah, I was gonna ask Chris about that. Is that a real thing? Did I actually need to like rub bacon grease all over myself this morning? Not really, because you kind of walk around in a perpetual <laughs> state of being covered with bacon type grease, right? I'm just trying to give myself an advantage. Yeah. You know, I figured me and you standing side by side, you already look like the taste. You never open a box of chocolates, right? Mm -hmm. And there's some like crappy ones all on the outside, you know, and there's that nice peanut cluster in the middle right there that everybody will that's you man when uh, when we're looking at bears they're looking at us like that box of chocolate and you're that peanut cluster in the middle that every bear wants but i figured get you to throw a little bacon grease on yourself <laughs> you know but you see my philosophy was that way they can't grab you <laughs> you can slip out and get away <laughs> slippery, yeah. i just had to film you for a second because you're sitting there like looking like one of them cigar store indian statues but like the kind of one they'd put out front of a donut shop, <laughs> you know? A real rotund cigar store Indian with his arms crossed, all stoic looking. You look all stoic. Or just like, I can't put my arms down. <laughs> like the little kid in uh, Christmas Story. Just, that's where your arms go. Hey, eh? Just looking out the window, just admiring nature. Just like, yes, yes, my people. This is where I belong. Remember when you wanted to get in touch with your Aboriginal side and learn about your culture, so you went to bingo? Over the next eight years, as Michael opened his property, what began as a trickle became a flood. 60 bears a day would come out of the wild and into Michael's life. Come on, guys, come and get her. As the bears and Michael developed trust, he began to do the remarkable, maybe unthinkable. He began to feed the bears by hand. The Gentle Bear Man of Emo. There's no sudden noises or movements, and that's good, because Clayton, you don't have any sudden movements. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Look, I see my first bear. The first year, one bear showed up. The second year, 13 bears showed up. The next year, 32 bears showed up. And since then, we've had between 50 and 60 bear a day. Take your food, you might fight him for it. Come on, eat the donut. There's no way it's the first donut you've had, big boy like you. Do you think this bear knows is the ugliest bear I've ever seen in my life? Should I say something like that? I think he's gonna eat it. Hey, you coming? Yeah. Hi. You gonna be safe in here? There you go. Down, yeah, no, no, this is good. 
Oh, oh my goodness. Everybody come out. You can, all, you, you can oh, all come out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Mary, would you like to film, please? Yes. Okay, ready? He's going to do the mouth. Get ready. Here we go. Here go right down. And here you go. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> here you go. He just wanted me to hug him. Okay, you want to do the mouth now? Yeah. All you got to do is go right down. Yeah. Hi. There you go. <laughs> Okay, you're next. He doesn't know yet what they're for, but he'll probably start fighting this fall, maybe. He's three <laughs> years old, so he should be old enough to breed now. All right, buddy. That dude's really going to town on you, Clayton. Does it remind you of a... Uh... At least he left his pants for now. <laughs> <laughs> Does that remind you of your prison days or what? <laughs> Whatever you got to do to survive, Clayton. <laughs> oh, you remember what it... Holy that deer crap. came up to you like, give me some chun chun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hurton, how you doing? You're looking better. All right, good, Missy. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. That's my pail. That's my pail. <laughs> you little bum. That's my pail. Let go. That's my hand. Here you go. Let go. There you are. Good girl. Good boy. I got pictures, guys. I got video here. Right here and over there, where I'm right from here to there away, watching a mom laying on her back nursing her babies. Yeah. And I'm videotaping it. <laughs> I went on Google to see if anybody else had it. I think I'm the first guy that did this. Well, no, there's other people have 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 filmed a mom nursing her young, but they said that she was a half a mile away. We needed this kind of a line to get in there. I, said, oh, I'm, I could have petted her. Wow. That's wild, because Clayton here has been kicked out of the mall for filming a mother nursing her baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, he was jealous? He wanted some? <laughs> people hear about this place. We don't have a website yet. We didn't really advertise anywhere, but people come from everywhere because they want to experience something that's nowhere else available on this planet where they can come out and join me. 95% of the time, and, and like you did, hand feed a wild bear. So yeah guys, uh, look into uh, Gentle Bear Man of Emo, uh, go to isaiahwildlife.org. Uh, they have a donations page. He does everything himself. All the food for the bears, all the acreage for the bear. I think he's got 300 plus acres. Yeah, and he, he drives into Fort Francis three, four times a week to collect food. And uh, he does this all by himself with absolutely zero funding. So we just wanted to support him and highlight what he's been doing out there because he does a lot of great work. IsaiahWildlife.org. Thank you guys so much. We'll be back with more After Dark after this. <laughs> so how are you enjoying the show so far uh i'm enjoying it yeah. i'm enjoying it you know what I, watching that video of us traveling to emo got right, me yeah. thinking about my all-time favorite road trip story of ours my oh. favorite road trip memory your favorite road trip memory so do you know what that would be would have to be the world famous comedy store in la nope nope no okay not, not performing in L.A.? Nope, no. Okay. Nope. Um, what about, oh, I know, uh, the Rocky Steps in Philadelphia, running up the Rocky Steps. Well, I ran up the steps. <laughs> <laughs> Clayton walked quite leisurely up the steps. How the hell do you get to the Rocky Steps and just walk? <laughs> it's, it's terrible. No, that's not it either. That's not that's it? That's not it. Okay. Um, oh, I know. Thunder Oh, Bay. we're not allowed to talk about Thunder Bay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No. So, uh, my favorite, my, your fa think my favorite road trip memory of ours. Cleveland. Absolutely. It is definitely Cleveland. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going to tell the story of Cleveland no. right now. No, I brought the video. And here's where Clayton dies. <laughs> here's where his shirt turns green. <laughs> <laughs> my shirt. 
You can do it, ma'am. This is actually just a flat piece of grass. And don't I'm run, holding don't the camera run, don't run. Up. I go, oh no, runway train. Oh! Okay. Okay, first off, <laughs> I'd like to point out that it's not on that video, the five minutes, because, okay, here's what happened. We had just left the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Very cool place. We saw some very cool things. We were walking back to where we had parked, which was in a marina, so it went down a hill. Now, all these guys went down the hill. Me, knowing this, went... I'm not gonna do the hill. I'm gonna walk around. So I said, I'll meet you guys over there at the end of the path. And I really wish we were filming then because the next five minutes, me and my other friend spent shaming Clayton on walk. Why, well, it's gonna be 15 minutes, Clayton. Don't be lazy. Just come right down here. It's gonna be fine. Like, I don't know, guys. I don't know if I should. Yeah, absolutely, you should. Okay. And then we looked the camera up because we just know. <laughs> and then this happened. It's yeah. gonna be fine. You survived though, you did okay. I, I cracked died. some ribs, but yeah. It wasn't <laughs> my pay, my favorite part of the video, you can hear me say, don't run, don't run. And Clayton's like, I don't even know what the hell running is, I've never done it before. <laughs> but you can see there's an actual moment where my body goes, nope, you're screwed. It's right there. There you go, oh no, run away train. Oh! And then, uh, and then what happened, Nelson, after, after I uh, hit the... Clayton hit spent a half hour doing his impression of the father from Family Guy on the curb going... Ah. <laughs> so I'd just like him to remember that he was like, no, no, we won't wait for him to go around, because that'll take time. <laughs> half an hour on the ground. <laughs> it was well worth it. It was well worth the wait. Okay. You knew it was going to end bad. How did you not throw yourself down on the hill where there's still grass? I like how everyone option. was like, don't run, don't do this. I'm like, I, as if I have a choice at this point. <laughs> Momentum had taken over. I was just going. I might have ended up in the water. I don't know. <laughs> Clean running oh, down. Boy. What's happening to my legs? <laughs> Been dragged out to sea by the tugboat. Kevin Dolby has a great joke that he didn't share tonight. Believe it or not, he actually has a good joke. I'm kidding, Kevin. Love you. <laughs> um, where he talks about riding a horse and falling off the horse, and he says, "We big guys, we look like we bounce, but we don't bounce. We don't bounce." <laughs> and no. that's proof. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it, man. This is actually just a flat piece of grass. Don't run! Don't run! Don't the run! Don't fuck run. Up. They go, oh no! Runaway don't train! Run, don't run! Don't run! Oh! You okay? Jesus. Uh, how to introduce uh, our special guest tonight, uh, I don't even know. He's well known in Winnipeg, Manitoba, across Canada. Right now he's doing Tazzy Reads, which is amazing. Uh, he's reading to uh, kids to keep them busy during quarantine. The one and only Big Daddy Taz. <laughs> Quite the, uh, quite the video there. That's fantastic. Don't that's, you, isn't uh, that the best thing you've you, ever seen? Did you, you learn that weight plus B equals inertia? Right? Yep. That's what yeah. It was. And were all those, uh, was that pavement busted before you hit it? <laughs> that, actually, did it look like a that look? You're an asshole, by the way. <laughs> hey, Clayton, come down here. What are, why are you filming? Come on down. No, no reason. Don't worry. Don't film this. No, no, don't walk around. You and I need to go on a road trip. Yeah. And you'll be the subject of a lot of videos. I think a, lo I think a lot of people would like to see that. <laughs> yeah. So how you been? I've been well. I've been I've been uh, quarantined and and uh, you know it's it's hard for entertainers to be honest with you, right? I mean it's 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 really hard. A lot of a lot of entertainers. I've uh, I've been getting phone calls from guys that are very and and gals too that are uh, entertainers that are that are very despondent and stuff. It's it's a it's a tough time. Entertainers were the first people to lose uh, their jobs. And we're going to be the last ones uh, to get our jobs mm -hmm. back. Yep. So, a lot of a lot of people are in financial ruin right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's 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 hard. We're we're uh, forced to sell our house and move to back into a another place, which is not a big deal. I mean, I, I, it's it's a rental place that we have, but it's a sign of the times, right? Where one one day you're like I'm on top of the world, and the next day is like 
am I going to have enough money for contact lenses tomorrow? <laughs> like that was a, and then they said, hey, do you want to come to a talk show? I'm like, perfect, and then it's this shit. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be the hill that I run down. <laughs> and at the end, at the very bottom, it's going to be that heckler <laughs> over there that's been wrecking it for everybody. I'm next, pal. <laughs> so how long have you been doing the reading for? Uh, the reading has been, uh, today is, I think, 112 days, I think, 113, something like that. 376 books. It's awesome. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's way more books than I, I read in my entire life as, mm -hmm. as a child, but... Uh, it's great. I mean, I've, I've, um, it all started out when uh, I was supposed to go to a school and the, they, they shut everything down. And I said, uh, well, you know what, maybe what am I supposed to do? Maybe just read to them online. And my youngest son, Weeby, he, he said, uh, yeah, let's do that. And my wife said, yeah, let's do that. So I put it out on Facebook. This is me on Facebook. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and uh, I, I just put it out. Would be anybody in, be interested in, in having me read? And... Um, it, it, the response is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the first video that I, I shot. We got 4,100 views. And uh, then uh, it just uh, actually went down from there. But, uh, <laughs> and you know what? There were days where I was getting 100 or 200 people watch, and there's the days where I get uh, two. And I still read with as much enthusiasm for those two, uh, those two kids as I do for uh, more, right? It's just... It's uh, and I've got dyslexia, which makes it so, and I and I and I, uh, I I mess up the words and I do things like that. But I just stop and say, well, you know what, uh, you know, I've got dyslexia and now I'm getting anxious. And when I get anxious, my dyslexia gets worse. And and I and I and I and I just mentioned it a couple of times, you know. And I'm, I'm very open. I've always been a very open with my with my uh, <laughs> learning disabilities and my uh, struggles and stuff. And and I get started getting some emails from these uh, these parents saying, you know what, my my, my daughter or my son really loves watching it because they have dyslexia or they have ADD and, uh, and, and uh, you're making a difference and, it, and I, that's why I did it. And I, I needed an outlet. I needed to feel useful, mm -hmm. right? With my depression, if I, if I don't wake up with a purpose every day, then uh, I don't feel like I have a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. See, and I heard you were doing this and I thought that's absolutely amazing and not so much that you're doing it, but that most comedians I know don't know how to read. So. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from contracts. It's incredible. Yes. <laughs> I should have read this one. <laughs> so Taz, you talked about uh, charity shows, fundraisers. You do a lot of work with schools and kids on bullying, right? Yeah, I teach them how. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blink twice if he's being mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I got bullied a lot in school, so I, I, I like to go into schools and, and uh, teach kids that they don't have to listen to what, uh, what somebody else is saying about them, right? Mm -hmm. And I try to get the teachers to understand how important it is to teach kids early that they don't need to uh, fit in anywhere, right? That they can mm -hmm. be themselves and things like that. Uh, you know, because I, I went through hell. I still get bullied by some of the... You know, in this industry, people will bully you, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Do you have a Nelson, too? <laughs> I am a Nelson. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got to be nice into this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it, it's, it's, it's all, all joking aside. Bullying kills. And, and that's, that's the simplest thing you can say. Bullying uh, has uh, had people take their lives, and, and there's no retribution really for the people that have forced people mm -hmm. into a situation where they think dying is better than uh, dealing with this every day, mm -hmm. right? So I don't, I don't put up with that shit anymore. Yeah. I will not, I will not, if as long, uh, not on my watch, not as long as I am around, will a child ever feel like they, 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 they need to, uh, to listen to what a bully is saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I share that passion. I, I can't stand bullying and it's so different for kids nowadays because when we were kids, you'd get bullied at school, you could go home and it's done, right? It's done for the day. You get to have your life with your family. But now with social media, it's just, it's constant for it's, them. There's it's, no escape. It's everywhere, right? Yeah. I, I teach the kids too. I, I, I say to them, you know, you also have a responsibility not to go on these sites mm -hmm. and, to, and to try to, and the parents have a responsibility too, and the parents of bullies have a responsibility to understand that, the, that they're raising bullies, right? Very often, uh, uh, the kids are, are learning, right? Because kids are a little echo of who we are mm -hmm. and who you are. So if you set that example, they're gonna think that's okay, right? 
I'm not here to be my kid's best friend. I'm not, that's bullshit. I'm not here to be <coughs> my, my, you know, best friend with my son. I'm here to set an example so that when I'm not here, they can take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a situation a little while ago where my, my oldest said, well, just, you know, I really hate you right now. And I said, you know what? I love you enough to let you hate me a bit right now because later on, as I found out way too late, that my dad wasn't the asshole, right? I just wasn't ready to hear what he needed to say, mm -hmm. right? So we have a responsibility as parents to step up and to, and schools have a responsibility to step up. And, and I don't think either one of those factions are doing that very well right mm -hmm. now. I do my best with my kids to teach them about bullying. I just bully the shit out of them constantly. Right, I am exactly. the asshole in their life. I get a call. I, I get do, lots yeah. of calls. I get lots of calls. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's coming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, going back to uh, the Tazzy Reads. Yes. Um, we uh, we wanted to uh, donate some some books. Well. Nelson got some books. Yes, I got some oh, books Nelson that I got took. Some books. This is going to be. Awesome. I took these out of my own children's library to donate to help with the cause. Uh, so I thought I'd present these for you. We got uh, number one. This book here is called "Go the F to Sleep." Oh, I love this book. <laughs> I read this every Wednesday. And then, by the same author who yeah. had a second kid, F now there are two of you. <laughs> the cats nestle close to their kittens, and the lambs have laid yes. down with their sheep. They're cozy and warm in your bed, my dear. Now please, go the f*** to sleep. <laughs> and, and my favorite, because it's a struggle that I've had with my kids, you have to f***ing eat. <laughs> <laughs> and These I'll, I'll read an excerpt from this one. The sunrise is golden and lovely. The birds chirp and twitter and tweet. You woke me up and asked for some breakfast. So why the f*** won't you eat? <laughs> And then, Tazzy, I was thinking if you wouldn't mind maybe reading this one. This is one that I got as well. It's called, Do You Want to Play With My Balls? <laughs> and if you don't want to read it, Clayton can read it. I'll read it, because then Clayton can play with my balls. <laughs> I got my glasses. I could read this for sure. Oh, no, this is big words. This is awesome. Big words are like more, never mind. <laughs> that was bullying. <laughs> hey, Louie. You want to play with my balls? <laughs> <laughs> Five bucks says we can't return this book now. <laughs> sure, Chuck. I can hold on your ball sack while, so it won't drag on the ground. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. <laughs> wow, your balls are so big. I can't even fit them in my mouth. <laughs> Chapter two. <laughs> you know what I mean, Sally? <laughs> she squeezed my balls so hard they look funny. <laughs> my funding. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Yesterday, Sally kicked Billy's ball so hard he lost one. <laughs> she kicked it over the fence. Quick. Yeah. No. <laughs> over the fence, you'd go around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Or you just go, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't wear red shirts anymore. <laughs> With big smiles on them. So, Taz, what are, what are you doing now? You're coming out of uh, COVID. You're starting to get some shows now? I got a few shows coming up. Uh, nothing, you know, nothing like uh, pre-COVID, for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. there's not going to be 1,000 people crowds. There's not going to be 500 people crowds. Uh, but I don't care. As a comedian, our job in times like this is to help uh, take people away from their lives for however long we're on stage, mm -hmm. right? That's what our job is. Our job is to, to uh, get up there and, and talk about what we're going to talk about and just have people uh, for an hour go by. They're like, I didn't think about the fact that I haven't been able to work. I haven't think about the fact that I'm losing this or I'm losing that or I'm, you know, I've had to defer this or I've had to defer that. And so I don't, I don't care where I do shows. I'm just going to be doing them. So I've done uh, a bunch of backyard stuff. I, I'm going to be doing a uh, Esther Hazy Saskatchewan uh, called me and said, hey, we want to do this. Uh, 
we heard about these driving thing. What, what do you think about doing it? And I said, it terrifies me. She goes, oh, so no? I said, no, I'll be there. Yeah. I'll be there. I don't care uh, if you're honking or you're waving or whatever it is. I'm doing one of those. I'm doing a driving show in Edmonton, and I was told the same thing. They honk if they want to laugh. I'm like, as long as they don't heckle by running your ass over, I'm going to do that. You're safe. <laughs> so if people wanted to book you for a backyard comedy show, what would they do? Uh, everybody but that guy can call <laughs> and, uh, oh, just uh, bigdaddytaz.com uh, uh, is, my, is my website, or get a hold of me on Facebook. Um, the uh, Tazzy Reads thing is under taz.norris, uh, I think it is. Yeah, Taz, I think so. I don't know. I don't read my Facebook. Uh, but I've got over 100, and I think it's almost 200 now, uh, episodes uh, on, uh, on YouTube as well under Tazzy Reads, hashtag Tazzy Reads. Oh, there awesome. you go. Perfect. Okay. All right, thanks again for coming out, Thank you. Good day, Taz, everybody. Oh. Thank you guys so much for coming out and uh, being a part of this, whatever this was. I'm not quite sure, but... Uh, we'd like to thank all of our guests. Uh, Kevin Doby, amazing comedian. Uh, please go and check out the uh, Bear Man of Emo, IsaiahWildlife.org. Uh, 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 you can go, please donate, help him, and, you know, plan trips. Go out and feed the bears, because it's awesome. It really is. <laughs> and, of course, we'd love to uh, thank our very special guest, Big Daddy Taz, for coming yeah! out. Of the show. Anything you wanted to say? Just thanks for coming out. Tell everybody about it because it's much more fun with an audience and we're going to do this every week for the next several Tuesdays. So thank you guys. Remember, everything is better after dark. <laughs>